Hi guys, welcome back for the final video in this little build series where I've been tackling building an epoxy river TV stand. In this video, I'll show you how I wrapped up this build by building some glass cabinet doors and getting the epoxy river top attached to the base of my TV stand. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right guys, so I've got a few steps left to get this TV stand fully wrapped up. And my next step is I need to get some cabinet doors made for this thing. So as far as the cabinet doors go, I've decided I'm only going to make doors on the bottom uh, section of openings. Uh, and then the top section here, I'll just leave open. Uh, these two on the top, especially on the ends, uh, they seemed a little bit too small to just really uh, fit a cabinet door in there, especially with the two inch uh, border surrounding it. So I've decided just to leave the top open. The middle section will be for the sound bar anyway, so that would have to be open anyways. Um, but so I'm only gonna make cabinet doors for the bottom section. And now as far as the doors that I'm gonna be making, I've decided to make some glass cabinet doors for the first time. Uh, in order for my remotes to work with uh, the electronics that I'm going to have inside of this, I needed some sort of glass door. So I'm going to be trying to make those for the bottom section. Now it's the first time I ever made one of these, like I said, uh, it seems fairly simple. Uh, I will be making it a little bit differently than I would make a normal uh, shaker style cabinet door that I tend to make. So I will show you all the steps that I take to make these glass cabinet doors. So my next step is I just need to go ahead and work on cutting down all of my parts for my doors and work on getting that assembled. To construct my cabinet doors, I'm going to be using some poplar boards that I will rip to two inches wide for the border of my glass door. Before I got to cutting everything to size, I took some time to figure out the exact sizes for both my rail and style pieces for each door. Now I plan on making some inset cabinet doors here for this TV stand and they will sit just inside of the cabinet openings. Once I had all of my measurements nailed down, it was time to get to cutting everything to size. As I mentioned before, I planned on having each of my style pieces be two inches wide surrounding my glass panel. The reason I chose this size in particular is because I needed enough room that would allow me to wrap it out a half inch groove for the glass panel to sit in and would still give me enough space to install my cabinet hinges. So with my table saw set to rip at two inches, I just ripped each of my pieces to that size. All right, I've got all of my pieces cut for my cabinet doors now. I've got my style pieces here. Uh, I cut these to about two inches wide and uh, I needed to leave these a little bit wider so that I had enough room uh, for my hinges to screw into. And now as far as the uh, rail pieces, I did make those one and three eight inches wide. Uh, I wanted to have a little bit more of a uh, opening for the glass, so I did make these pieces a little bit smaller. So now my next step is I need to figure out how I'm gonna join my rail and style pieces together. Now, typically when I make any sort of cabinet doors, I just use a tongue and groove system. I have a tongue on my rail pieces and a groove on my style pieces, and then I just glue and clamp those together. However, uh, because this is going to be a glass cabinet door, I do plan on rabbiting out a section for the glass to sit down inside of, and I didn't wanna use that same method of joinery uh, for these particular doors. So I needed to find a way that I could join these uh, pieces together uh, instead. And you know, I could use something like pocket holes, screws, and I have done that in the past, but I didn't wanna go with those uh, this time because I didn't want those pocket holes to be exposed. So I decided that I'm going to be using some dowels for this particular uh, glue up and uh, basically to drill those dowel holes I just got this uh, dowel jig. This one particular one is from PowerTech and it's a 3 8 inch doweling jig and it's got uh, my spot where I can drill out my holes and lines where I can line everything up and I'll show you how to do that in just a second but and then I'm gonna just be filling those holes with this is just a 3 8 inch fluted dowel pin and I'll just be plugging those holes and joining it together with some glue and clamps and that's how I'm gonna glue up these uh, cabinet doors. So let me show you the whole process of how I get uh, this whole jig set up, how I drill all my holes and then how I clamp these cabinet doors together. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is take my rail pieces and find the center point. 
make a mark. Then I want to take my pieces, making sure to make note of uh, which side looks best. And basically just getting it mocked up like I want it. Then I want to, with it lined up, I want to make another mark and transfer it to the other piece. And now I have done a trial run of this already and I found that you really want a fine point for this mark because the more accurate mark is, it's going to help you line up uh, this jig accurately and make sure you get this perfectly lined up. So the finer the point, the better I found that it is at getting it 100% accurate. And basically I'm just going to do that same thing for each of my uh, four corners. Something worth mentioning that I forgot to do initially is when you are marking your joints here, make sure to label each side like A, B, C, D. Um, so that way you, when it comes time to pairing them back up together, you know exactly which joints go together. All right, and so as you can see, I now have marks in all my four corners on both of my pieces, and that's gonna help me uh, line up this jig uh, when it comes time to drilling the holes in each of my pieces. So first up is go ahead and start drilling some holes. I'm gonna start with my rail pieces first. And basically what I'll do is I'll just take that mark that I made uh, on my piece, and then there's a line here in the middle. Uh, and I wanna get that completely lined up with that mark that I made. And I wanna make sure this thing is sitting flush and not angled. You want this to be as straight as possible and absolutely on that mark. So to make sure I'm exactly on that mark, I'm just gonna clamp this in place. All right, to get this thing set up, just gonna clamp my rail piece to the table. I'm going to take my jig and clamp it to the uh, piece, getting that line on my jig lined up perfectly uh, with my marks on my jig. All right, I've got my piece clamped to my table and I've got the jig clamped to the piece. I've got quite a few clamps on here because it's important to keep this thing steady while I'm drilling so that way it doesn't uh, shift on me and these lines uh, get unaligned up. So basically the next step is I just need to drill in my holes here. Uh, I've got my provided drill bit, bit with a stop collar here. Uh, I've set it to the depth that I want for this size pen. And now I just need to drill my two holes. It's important to make sure that your uh, drill bit and stop collar is as straight as possible because you wanna make sure that you've got uh, straight holes in here for your dowels to go into. That's just going to help with the alignment. All right, so next up is I just need to drill these holes and then repeat that process for all of my other pieces. pieces to join these two together I'll do the same thing uh, using my line as a reference I'll set my jig up on that line and then I will drill into the side of my style pieces a little dry fit here so I've got my dowels in one piece Take my two lines and line them up. All right, so as you can see, that's pretty good. By the time I put glue and clamps on here, I'll be able to clamp this thing together pretty good. Um, so, and those dowels will just add some strength to this joint here, uh, especially in combination with the glue. All right, so now I just need to repeat this process for each of my corners on all of my three doors and then it'll be time to get these uh, glued and clamped together.
right, so let's do a little dry fit here and see how we did. All right, I've got one of my cabinet doors uh, dry fit with the dowels in place, and I gotta say, this thing looks awesome. Uh, all of my joints are just super flush and this thing is super square. So that's just going to make my life a lot easier when it comes time to installing these doors into the TV stand. So now that I feel like I've got that jig really dialed in, I just need to do the same thing for my other two cabinet doors and then I'll have these things ready to be glued up and clamped together. To get these cabinet doors glued up, I applied a decent amount of wood glue to both the wood and the fluted dowel pins, and then I just lightly clamped them together. I didn't apply too much pressure here because I didn't want them to bow. So I just applied enough pressure until I got some good glue squeezing out, and then I wiped off as much of that glue as I could. Seeing how well my marked lines were lining up, I felt good about the alignment of everything. I left these doors clamped up overnight to give them lots of time to set up before my next step. All right guys, I got these cabinet doors out of clamps now and these glued up really nicely. So the next step is I need to rabbit out a section on each of my doors for my glass panel to sit inside of. Now as far as the glass for these doors go, I just went to Lowe's and had them cut me a piece of glass. Um, this is about 24 by 32 inches and then I will cut this uh, piece down to the exact dimensions that I need to fit inside of each of these doors. Now to fit the glass inside the doors, I'm going to need to wrap it out a section uh, in each of my doors that the glass can sit in and then I've got some clips which I'll show you in a minute that um, will sort of hold the glass in place. Uh, but first up I need to wrap it out that section on each of my doors and to do that I'm going to be using a half inch rabbiting bit on my router. Um, and then I'll just run that along the interior of each of these doors on the back side and that will wrap it out a section for my glass to go. All right, so now I just need to get to work on routing all of that out and then we'll be getting ready to cut the glass to size to put in the doors. Since I was going to need a square corner for my glass to be inserted and a router will only provide you with a round corner, I had to create a square edge. To do this, I used this little tool from Milescraft. I think it came in a kit I purchased once for installing door hinges, but I'm sure they sell something like it on its own. This was nice because it allowed me to get most of the material cut away and then I could come in with a chisel and clean it up. Now a nice sharp chisel would take care of this step really quickly, but I didn't have any nice chisels at the moment, so I was using one we had in the garage that's been beat up pretty heavily over the years. I don't do a ton of fine woodworking to justify spending a good chunk of change on a really nice set of chisels, but I will confess that I did go out and buy a few nicer ones after doing this just to have around for stuff like this. All right, so I've got this section rabbited out for my glass panel, so now it's time to get my glass panels cut to size. Now, to cut this glass, I'm just going to be using a glass cutter here that I will score along my mark and then snap the glass off and then fit that inside my panel. And I'll show you the clips that I'm going to be using to hold the glass in the uh, rabbited section uh, in just a second. So, all right, let me go ahead and work on getting these cut to the exact size that I need. All right, I'm just going to measure and make a mark on the glass where I need. I'm going to use a sharpie, that way I can see it. I've got this little glass cutter here that I'm going to use to score this glass along my line. And this is when things started to go south. 
This was the first of many breaks for me. This glass that I got was super thin stuff and it was breaking all over the place. Well, everywhere except where I wanted it to. As far as I know, I was doing the scoring process correctly and it felt like it was scored well enough to break evenly, but for some reason, it just kept breaking on me in random places until finally I had just had enough and I said to myself, You know what? I can't do it. Welcome to my nightmare, guys. As you can see here, things aren't going well. Uh, I don't know if it's just this glass, if it's me, if it's the technique I'm using, but for some reason, this glass is not always snapping on the scored line that I'm making. Um, you know, I did a little bit of research before I got into this glass cutting, and um, I think I'm doing everything like you're supposed to do, and I can visibly see a very scored line, but for some reason, uh, a lot of the times the glass is just breaking in random places. Uh, so it makes you not even be able to use the rest of the sheet, which is kind of annoying. Um, as you can see here, I have a lot of other broken glass. Uh, this is, uh, these are two panels that I bought thinking that's gonna be more than enough for three tiny cabinet doors. Uh, but now I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to use any of this glass, unfortunately. Um, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave this to the professionals. Uh, I'm just gonna contact a local glass shop, give them the measurements that I need for these cabinet doors and then have them cut it to size. And then uh, once those come in, I'll pretty much be ready to just put those in my doors and get these things ready to be installed. That's gonna save me from having to buy more glass to have to deal with this headache of trying to get it cut perfectly. And it'll probably look a lot better than if I try to do it. So now we wait. In the meantime, I worked on getting the rest of my cabinet doors finished up. I got them painted and then I worked on installing the cabinet hinges. To get these hinges installed, I used my Craig cabinet jig. This makes drilling the cups for the hinges pretty easy. I just make a mark on my door where I want the center of my hinge and then I line the jig up with that mark and clamp it in place and drill out for my hinge. Then I worked on installing my hinges into each of my cabinet doors. Now every hinge is a little bit different depending on the type of door they are being installed on. I was making inset cabinet doors here, so these hinges were designed for inset cabinet doors on a frameless style cabinet. Then it was time to get these cabinet doors installed on the TV stand. To do so, I set them inside of the cabinet and then I used some playing cards to get even spacing all around my door. Once I was satisfied with my spacing and placement of the door, then I used a self-centering drill bit to drill some holes on my hinge clips and then I attached the hinges to the TV stand using the provided screws. And this is when I realized that one of the advantages of not having the glass in these doors yet is that it made this whole process go much smoother because I had easier access to screwing my hinges into place. Once I had the door attached, I removed my playing cards and checked to see how I did. I'm still working on getting better at installing inset cabinet doors. I've come a long way from where I started, but luckily I don't have to get it perfect on the first try because there are some adjustments on the hinges themselves that help me get everything where it needs to be. So I just make adjustments until I'm satisfied with the reveal. And because inset hinges require something to stop them in order to get them flush, I just attached a small piece of wood to serve as a stop block with some CA glue and one screw. You'll just have to take my word for it since the footage is pretty lackluster. My bad. Then I just repeated that same process for each of my three doors. Then it was time to get my glass panels installed into each of my doors. 
Now I had planned on getting the glass from a local glass shop, but I ended up being back at Lowe's first. I mean, cause I feel like I'm always there. And I thought to myself, I wonder if they will cut glass to an exact measurement. Well, as it turns out, they will. The fact that I didn't just think of that to start with had me feeling all like, I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. But now I know for the future, I guess, and hopefully some of you guys do now too. So anyways, I asked them to cut me three pieces to the exact size that I needed, and I was ready to get them installed in my doors. To hold the glass in place, I used some of these glass retainer clips that I picked up from Amazon, and they screw into the door and help hold the glass tight against the section I rabbited out. I made sure to put one in each of my four corners, and then I placed a few extra in the middle to make sure it was good and tight. And since my dog loves to throw the tennis ball around in the house, I need this thing to be good and secure. With the doors installed on the TV stand, it was time to get some knobs attached to it. It was also time to charge my phone apparently because it died while filming this step so I don't have the full footage. But basically I just used a level to mark out where each knob needed to be and then I drilled a hole and attached each. And even though I only have three cabinet doors, I installed four knobs because the OCD part of my brain just needed that symmetry. With that, these cabinet doors were pretty much wrapped up and I could get to work on attaching the top for this TV stand. To attach my top to the base of the TV stand, I'm going to be using some figure eight clips. Let me demonstrate how they work on some scrap wood first. Basically, I just drill a hole in my piece just shallow enough for the clip to sit in, and then I use a chisel to cut out the sides to allow the clip to move more easily. I then attach one screw into the wood from the top. There's another opening which will allow a screw to be screwed in through the bottom of the clip into the top. I will attach a couple of these clips into the base of the TV stand so that when I'm ready to attach the top, I'll just need to sink some screws through these clips. Then it was finally time to get this new TV stand installed in its new home, which meant I first had to move the current one. Which led me to realize just how horrible I was at dusting the old one. Yeah, disgusting. Once the new TV stand had made its way into our living room, I worked on the complicated task of cable management and getting everything installed the way it was. I fed all of my cords through those rubber grommets I'd installed, and after some time, everything was hooked up again and in its new home. Then I could finally attach the epoxy river top to this TV stand, which in my opinion really makes this piece special. To attach the top, I made sure that I had an even amount of overhang on each of my sides, and then I just screwed some screws through those figure eight clips that I pre-installed. I also reinstalled all of my glass cabinet doors, which is not shown here. I decided to take those off during assembly to avoid getting them banged up. Once the doors were installed, I got the TV stand in its final spot and prepared myself to take some measurements for adding the baseboard trim. But as I was taking measurements, I got to thinking about how much I really liked the look of the TV stand without the trim, which is kind of funny because that was one of my biggest complaints with the old TV stand. Anyways, I did go ahead and cut some trim to size and I'm going to take some time to decide whether I want to add it or not. I feel like it needs to live in the space for a while before I can make that kind of decision. And hey, maybe I'll be better about dusting this time. Sure, Jan. And now it was finally time for me to step back and admire the end of another finished project. I am really, really happy with how this TV stand turned out overall. I was able to tackle a lot of firsts with this project that I feel like just helped me become a better builder. That is sort of the goal with every project that I do. I just enjoy making stuff and it's always cool to learn some new things and get better with each new build. 
I appreciate you guys following along with my journey on this build over the last few videos. If you found them at all entertaining, educational, or useful, feel free to give me a big ol' thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I've been working on growing my channel recently and I would truly appreciate the support. And if you happen to miss any of the previous videos in this series, I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video where you can check them all out. I will also link all the products that I used in this video in the description box. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I'll be seeing you all again soon for my next project. Bye.